Okay guys, so let's bring you up to speed with what's been going on with the new Eve tank. What an absolute nightmare. I really don't know where to start. Um, we've been to hell and back with this uh, this new reef build. So if you follow the channel, you realise that I haven't done a post for ages and it's simply because we've had so many problems with this tank and the water's been so cloudy, it's just been, it would have been horrible to film. So the last post I put up was what, six weeks ago? And things weren't going well then. The tank is just over three months in now from the very start since we transferred the livestock from the Max Nano. And we've been plagued with problems from the out the gate really. Uh, it's been, uh, yeah, I'd say it's been a nightmare. We've lost lots of coral initially on the transfer within a few weeks, maybe within a month, two months in. And since then up to now, it got even worse where we were very, very close to a tank crash. Now, I've been doing this reef keeping, marine keeping, saltwater game for a very long time now. Probably what, since the age of 20, so it's sort of 20, just over 20 odd years. And every tank is different, but this one's been an absolute bugger. Um, say, I've tried everything in my arsenal, my knowledge to, uh, to turn it round. That's what you have to do, you just have to try different things. And um, I've never had to send off an ICP test. And in the end, I had to, I had to bite the bullet and uh, send a water sample off to Triton for an ICP test to see exactly what's going on because the just tank, the tank was not happy at all. And you know, you just have to work through your different theories, what you think it could be. Uh, obviously, the main parameters you check and make sure this absolutely solid. But sometimes you can be scratching your head and not know, so you have to send off for ICP. Um, so that's what we recently done, and uh, just my luck. I was waiting ages for the results to come back, sort of over a week. Um, I've cut a long story short, uh, made contact with Triton. And unfortunately, something went wrong with their analysis machines and they used both of my samples. Um, so therefore, they had to send me out a, a new kit to do another sample. Annoyingly, that's like two, three weeks after I sent off the first sample. So it wasn't really going to give me a picture of what was going on then, if you know what I mean, because I was implementing things to try and correct things in the meantime. So, um, yeah, the first thing I thought was initially out of the gate, we didn't have enough light on this tank. Uh, we just had the one Kessel A360X, which wasn't producing enough par, no doubt. So that wouldn't have done the tank very well uh, to start with. So corals probably would have been a bit weakened from that. Uh, but I just didn't know what was going on because we have RTN, rapid tissue necrosis everywhere. We lost lots of SPS. Um, and I just thought, well, you know, it's got to be something. Maybe it's something in the woods, a piece of shard of metal from when I was I had cut, cut out the last pain or divider pain to make four chambers in the sump so maybe a shard of the, the, the blade had come off and you're leaching metals into the tank so you know unless you're testing for these you know these things you're just not going to know so i thought just let's just icp it and uh, see what comes back and, and surprisingly the icp come back with there's no heavy metals in the tank um everything was all to, all the trace elements all good all you know everything was all tickety boo all in the green um but weirdly, what happened is the tank has turned around, you say it's semi-crashed, near enough crashed. Um, but what I, the things I put in place were, uh, obviously we added the second Kessel, A360X, which has obviously given loads more par. But I've been plagued with the bacterial bloom from day one, really. And uh, it's only just started to turn around, and I think we're on the right path out of the woods. Um, because the water's clearing and the corals have improved massively. So we've lost a lot of coral, annoyingly. I'm going to get the camera off the tripod in a minute, so um, I'll give you a show around. But yeah, ICP come back fine. The changes we've made, we've added that added extra Kessel. Now, I have made a big diff big change to uh, the amount of rock that's in here. I've taken out all the D&D &D Marco rock out, and luckily, a fellow reefer of mine, if you follow the channel, we did a, um, we played a visit to a friend of mine's house who had a Red Sea uh, Max 250, and he finally shut it down in the end, and I had all of the live rock out there, which was probably down near 10 year 
10 years mature. So I think that done me a bit of a favour really, putting, introducing loads more live rock. Um, we've got loads in the sunk as well. So just sort of give, give it a bit of a head start, although it's a young tank, I say new tanks are always uh, a bit of a bugger after six months and you can go through all these horrible stages. But um, yeah, that definitely sort of put me forward in time, I think. Um, we created a new scape. I wasn't 100% happy with the old scape. It was a bit tall. Um, so yeah, we've put in all that mature live rock, which is encrusted in coralline algae. And um, we had a little bit of dive initially and we got some cyano, but that soon cleared. And I think it's regenerated itself now within, it's been in a few weeks. So uh, I think that's why the tank's sort of turning around. So, it's an absolute nightmare really. So we were, we were on the verge of a tank crash. All the corals that you see now and here, which I'll show you here closely, um, weren't like they, you can see them today. They were, you know, a week or two ago, they were really on their last legs and, and uh, receding loads. The LPS was all receding, all closed up. And it was just a case of, oh, I'm gonna lose the lot. I'm gonna have to do a complete restart. But no, things have turned around. Um, so, up to then it's just real cloudy water couldn't film the tank properly wasn't really in the mood really to be honest as well as a film so anyway let's get the camera off the tripod and uh, give a little show around the system so the water is still a little bit cloudy but it's what 70 percent better than it was so i think we're on the right path but this new scape i'm really happy with apologies for the glare I've, i have got um, a coral filter on the camera so you can see better. But this new scape is, uh, let's try and focus in better, is really nice because we've got sort of an elevated center island, but we've got lots of uh, caves, cave networks everywhere for all the fish. So we're still stocking the fish. We're nowhere near ready to put more coral in yet. So we're probably a month away from that. But so this scape I'm really happy with. So we've got some nice network of tunnels and caves going down through the main scape. Everywhere. But this new rock that's gone in, or this live rock, it's a mixture in here of, sort of probably 50% live rock. And what I had was really mature, the real reef rock from the Nano. Sorry for the orange glare. But coral wise, let's just run through them. So we've got this lovely blasto here. That was uh, all closed up and on its way out, but it's, it's puffed back up and really happy. My frog's born here. That was, I, I swear, I, I thought I was gonna lose that. That was really receding. His flesh was sort of disappearing off the trunk and really closed in and deflated for quite some time, but it's bounced back lovely. Thank God. And we've got this hammer here that I got from my son's tank, which was tiny, smaller than a small, uh, your smallest fingernail, little finger fingernail. It was about three tentacles on it. And now there's what, nearly 20 odd. Clownfish come out so low and they're hungry. They haven't fed the tank yet today. We've got a peacock wrasse. This day I'll go to fish in a minute. Uh, that's a coral from my son's tank, I can't remember the name of it now. Duncan, this Duncan was really closed up and retracted in, but it's puffed right up, really extended, lovely. My Hasuta, that's actually growing loads, expanding out. We've got a couple of frags recently put in that my son bought, just sort of takes, took some frags off of it. It's really a luminous Montipora. Hopefully that does okay. We did a little bit of STN on it. We've uh, fragged it off. Pulse coral, as you can see here, is what I'm on about with corals. It's just melting away. So whether that come back or not, I'm not sure. Just put it up higher up in the tank, just to give it a good head start. This is from Corey's tank. Nice fresh piece there. And GSP I've actually glued to the back wall. That was in a right state, virtually dead. It's only just started coming back up again now into health, but it's, it's colours right off. It's usually really illuminous. So that took a right beating. Now, through this whole period, the stylo here, 
it's been fine. It was a little bit retracted in, but it seems to soldier on. It's actually regrowing now, white tips. All the zoas are back out again. They were really closed in, really closed in for, for weeks. Um, I think that's sort of covered coral wise. So, this new rock's lovely. You've got this really big piece here. So it's got a nice platform here. Yeah, so, the plan is to have on this top ridge all the way around on the top ridge all SPS branching SPS up and then through the middle we're gonna have sort of all LPS torches and whatever down to the sand bed maybe do a bit of a zoo garden or whatever but yeah I've got a vision and uh, gonna stick with it and persevere because that's what you have to do with this game even if you get setbacks so this hobby sometimes comes to kick you and remind you that it's not as easy as you think it is. So I've done everything right. This tank runs runs like a dream. Um, so the sump and everything, I'll just show you in a minute. It's all perfect. The tank runs beautifully. So parameters, the major elements, alkalinity, calcium and magnesium, rocks, rock steady. Absolutely bang perfect. And uh, yeah, so... I think it was probably a bacterial issue. I'm not sure. I'm probably never going to know. Um, new tank syndrome. Anyway, I should do another ICP testing, maybe a month's time, just to make sure everything's uh, everything's perfect. I don't know if it's a nutrient issue, bacterial issue. I'm not, I just don't know. But I think we're uh, we're on the right path now with it. Uh, algae blenny. So going into fish, and hopefully you can catch on screen just here now. If you don't see them often come out, an engineer convict goby. There's actually two in here. This one lives over here underneath this structure. It's made a burrow. And there's another one over this side. Just in this cave down in there, if you can see his head. I was hoping they'd stay together, but uh, so they're only youngsters. They will change, uh, when they go out there, they change their colors from that horizontal stripe to vertical pattern. And they will got, they get quite fairly big as well. Um, so all fish absolutely fine, no issues with fish, so they're happy as Larry. Um, so we are going to introduce more fish, not sure, might put a tang in here. And obviously only a, a small one, you know, a small species, well, you know, maybe a yellow tang, mimic tang or a uh, bristle tooth one. Um, bristle nose or whatever they call them. So that it's the dwarf type tangs, I'm not sure yet. But we're going to add in a lot more wrasse. Yeah, so we've got the two Kessels running lovely with the controller, spectral Kessel X controller. Um, everything looks a bit orange obviously because I've got the filter on. The next thing I've got to do is sort out the flow because the flow is definitely not right in the tank. Uh, so we've probably got enough flow, but it's just not, it's not producing the right flow patterns to be honest. Uh, we need. We need to sort that out. I'm just sort of doing all my homework and sort of deciding which uh, which wave pumps I'm going to be going for. Um, so that would be helpful if you could chuck a comment in the box below if you can give me any tips on wave pumps. So I've done my homework and there is some specific requirements for what I want. Um, I think I probably want to go for sort of gyre type style ones, which to be honest, out of, out of all of them, there's only two really just to consider and that's obviously the new Red Sea reef wave gyre pumps or the new max spec jump ones which are quite cheap actually but i do prefer the red ones the red sea ones i'm not sure yet so mp40 is too powerful for this um i've also looked at i think it's the size ones and uh yeah so yeah give us some tips on some wave points what you think what you think i should do for for flow so at the moment we've just got this TMC one and the, uh, the little Tunzi one there. Anyway, down in the sump, apologies, it's really messy. I need to have a really good uh, good clean up in here. I like to keep my sumps really mint and everything all organized, lovely, but it's a bit of a state. But loads of more live rock down in here. So we've got a filter sock, 100 micron, loads more live rock. Our beast of a skimmer, a Tunz, in the center there, pulls out loads. We've got loads of Biohome Ultra, probably five, four or five kilograms, two max spec bio blocks, 
some red C Max um, respect carbon, even more rock there. That's not live rock, well, it's the uh, the D break off of the D and D rock, sort of small pieces. Dosa, only one line running, one line to the dosa because we are using Tropic Marins all for reef. I need to do a separate video on this stuff because. <laughs> It's just unbelievably stable. You just dose one solution, keeps your alkalinity, your calcium, your magnesium, and all of your trace elements where they need to be. It, it, it doses them balanced, you know, the balanced right ratios. And I test my alkalinity every couple of days, and it's bang on. Same with the calcium, magnesium, and ICP showed up. All the trace elements are, are in the green, the green slides, all exactly where they should be. So that's proof after sort of three months of dosing this stuff that it definitely works. We've just come off on a couple of water changes just to um, you know, make sure our nutrients aren't going too high. My phosphates were at 0 0.07, nitrates are currently 5 ppm. Um, so yeah, I need to get Hannah Checker actually for phosphate because that is a really important parameter actually we need to keep stable anywhere between 0 0.03 and 1 we want to keep it. Uh, then we will start carbon dosing with Tropic Marin's uh, reef balance. But then again, that's another video and I'll explain about that. So I'm quite happy, I'm in good spirits that the tank is turning around. Uh, say corals are doing well that's existing in here. If I continue to see good growth and health from the existing corals in here, then obviously we'll do a, uh, a little shopping trip and get some, uh, some more LPS in here, some torches get some more SPS up here. Annoyingly I lost my barley slimer but we should get another one of those um, and we get some really nice colonies of SPS up this top ridge. So that's it really. I don't know really what else to cover. I think, you know, I've covered most things. So a reminder, so as long as I've been in this game a long time, over 20 years, uh, you can still get uh, Get some bad luck, however good you run the system. So, anyway, I apologize this video has been so long. Um, just had a lot to cover, and I'm going to check in with you within a week or so. Then we should uh, should have our new pumps, wave pumps. So, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up, guys. It really helps me out getting that thumbs up and uh, I will catch you in the next one.